All right, guys. A female cop get cop gets caught seducing inmates. Let's check it out. This is Charlene. In the interrogation room. Oh my gosh, bro. Wait, is this an interrogation room? O'Banion, a prison officer being accused of sleeping with an inmate. He felt me. I was like soaking through my clothes. After hearing rumors from other officers that had seen her and Jason Parker together, an investigation was opened up. Charlene thinks she flew under the radar and got away, but what she doesn't know is that the detectives have all the evidence they need, and they're about to expose... Oh, no, she is in the interrogation room, guys. ...and embarrass her in the most brutal way possible. You got a lot of that head game. <laughs> oh, my God. Right from... No way, guys. Is he like a corrections officer, guys? From the start, Charlene plays innocent and pretends she doesn't know anything. Now she's in the... He's the one... The, the tables... I wonder if the, the, the detectives was like, Oh, how the tables have turned before, like, stepping and uh, asking... Starting to ask her questions, guys. Think about the allegations. We're notified of a possible improper relationship between you and uh, Jacob Parker. So, for... Dang, bro, you think the prison inmate sw switched up on her and snitched? We're here for that. I just kind of want to talk to you about it and get your side of that story. I don't know anything about it. I mean... Okay. Have you talked to him on any jail phone calls or anything like that? Uh, no. None at all? Mm -hmm. Charlene is sure that this will work, but the detectives have much more evidence than they're letting on. And where would you think that this allegation would come from? Dang, bro. She should have asked for a lawyer, man. That's the smartest I can do. It's silly. If there's nothing to it. Um, well... Looks like she got bored of her job and wanted to explore other things, bro, but... No, she knew she would get in trouble like this, guys. I had a feeling this was coming. So there was an inmate um, named Coker, Justin Coker. Okay. He got out of here for, I don't know, what period of time. And he tried to contact me on Facebook. He sent me a message and I blocked him on Facebook. And um, I guess one time Parker was going back to Bequa to use the bathroom. And he was talking like at the window with me. Mm -hmm. And I guess Coker like didn't like that, which I had no contact with him or anything. And um, Parker had told me that he had gone up to him and was like, don't talk to her or something crazy like that. Hey, bro. So she's kind of hinting that, that she had a relationship already with him. So, uh, I'm just not trying to be rude here. I'm just talking about how she got, she got, <laughs> you know, defended by the other inmate for just talking to someone else. Why would you expect this conversation to come up from that? Like now, if that happened a few months ago. Charlene claims that the only time she's had contact with Jason was a single time outside the jail bathroom. And it was a jealous inmate that started the rumor. But what the heck? They'd be going in the bathroom? The detective is about to share some evidence that instantly proves that Charlene is hiding something. I don't know exactly where, how it started, like who it started from. Um, but I was told that it was brought to somebody's attention and then we looked at jail calls. And there's jail calls between you and Parker. And all that stuff's recorded. So mm -hmm. I don't think you're being completely truthful. Well, I, I kind of know that you're not. And I'm not trying to be rude when I say that. Yeah, no. um, I'm just kind of trying to lay it out on the table for you. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of tell me what's going on? Um, I guess a few years ago, we we talked and then... Oh, now, now she's spilling the beans here, guys. Wow. I ended up here and then he ended up here. I didn't know he was here. I didn't like, it wasn't anything like that. Um, and Apparently Charlene and Jason knew each other before prison and messed around before they both ended up here. This led to them joking around with each other here, but nothing else. That's what she's claiming has happened guys, but that night might not be the, the fact here guys. I don't, you think they have like, <laughs> It would be kind of strange for them to have video evidence, but th there's a good chance they have it. I mean, they're not strange, but like, you know, awkward. What, like, what if he like plays it in front of her and stuff? Like, Or at least that's what she claims. In reality, the cops have recorded phone calls from inside the prison that tell a completely. Wow, that's so silly, bro. She, she knows. She, she knows that all, all prison 
uh, phone calls get recorded. But she straight up doesn't care, it seems. Different story. So what about some of these phone conversations? Um... No. Literally, like every word gets recorded, man. No, not here or the phone. I thought no, I just mean the conversations y'all are having on the phone. No, no. Since he's been in here. Like, like sexual? Well, not, I'm not saying having phone sex, talking about sexual acts. My, from what I'm listening to on the calls, I take it as that you've given him oral sex at some point, is what no, I, I gather from these calls. No, no, no. no, that was like in the world, but we never like, we never dated. Yeah, she's claiming it was from way back then, just, which can be a valid claim, guys, because they said they have dated before. What kind of conversations have you had with him since you started working here and he's been in the jail? Uh, I don't know, just talking about what would happen after he got out. And then the jail call recordings, have you been talking to him like while you're at home? Like he calls you from the jail while you're at home? or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just 15 minutes. Bro, so why are they making these long phone calls, bro? First of all, phone calls cost like thirty dollars to even have. And it's into this interrogation. Charlene's original story is seeming less and less like the truth. She's been caught in multiple lies, admitted to having sexual relations with Jason in the past, and calling him regularly from her own home. Bro, you know how prisoners get like you know, girls fawning over them. You think the same thing's happening here, guys? Oh my gosh. But literally, it's so easy to get caught doing this, because, you know, all your phone calls are recorded, there's cameras everywhere. This is highly irregular behavior for a prison officer, and it doesn't take a genius to realize something deeper may be going on. But the detective has some more questions pertaining to some more physical evidence. I haven't listened to this, but apparently... There may be some talk in the calls about, like, photographs. Have you given him any photographs? Mm -mm. No way, bro. They, they could also just, like, check his cell and everything, guys. If there's one place to get caught, it's a prison. I wonder if the inmate's gonna experience any, like, um, repercussions for this, or is it gonna just be her? I gave him a photograph of his mom, which he had asked for, and of his dog, Jax. Okay. Yeah. Have you given him any photographs? He's getting like, a, you know, tricked to, you know, spill more and more evidence, guys, because, you know, trying to get him off uh, her tail, but there's probably just some, there's probably going to be more, guys. Have you? Hmm. No, because. So, one of the things we're going to be doing is like looking at cameras and stuff, too. Has there been any times where y'all were alone? Mm -hmm. Or you go out of camera view or anything like that? Anything that's going to look suspicious that way? I don't think so. It's important. He's under a full-on investigation, guys. To remember that Charlene has worked at this prison for a while now. Oh, it's a county jail. It's not really a prison. Now, and as such, we'll know all the ins and outs of everything such as... Guys, those style of bunks that... Uh, I've never seen a prison like... I mean, I've seen prisons like this, but... Or jails, rather, but... Mine was a lot different. It was like a giant dormitory. Security camera blind spot. I guess you can call that a uh, dormitory, but that's and patrol officer schedules You'd think that with all this knowledge it'd be easy to hide a relationship with an inmate But it seems that she forgot about a few vital pieces of information Not least the facts that all phone calls placed from the prison are Literally when you first dot when you first pick up the phone It says that your phone calls do get monitored and <laughs> recorded guys like record Hands down. But thanks to the detectives, she's about to be reminded of this fact in a devastating way. Yes. Put in a CD. Go back. Baby, guess what? What thing? I just won the blackjack game. <laughs> I wonder if she's like putting money on his books and everything, guys. Look at her, look at her face expression. She's like, oh gosh, I'm screwed, aren't I? Yay. I just want $30. I got a lot of stuff to clean and get rid of before you come home. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no, they're flirting, bro. They're straight up flirting, bro. I guess she, you know, when, when she's a female officer working in like a male, or mostly male prison, she got in over her head, it seems, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm just fucking with you. 
was trying to make you think I have all these secret things. Yeah, I bet you do. What? 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 What do you mean? I don't know. You probably got this weird sex swing hanging from the ceiling. This reminds me of, like, you know, the first, like, few months of dating or something. Where there's just, like, you know, just, like, a lot of chemistry going on. Or maybe maybe even uh, later on in a relationship. I don't know, guys. I haven't had really long relationships. Candace probably thinks it's a swing set. Oh, if I had that sex swing, you better believe I'd leave that sucker up for you. What the heck? A swing, bro. Hell yeah. You let me put you in it? Yeah. Oh my gosh, bro. They're making plans and everything for when he gets out, guys. Uh, she could have waited. That's all she had to do. She could have waited. Not, not went on some phone calls where they can easily get evidence. I'm not saying that should be done, guys. But. She made some big mistakes here. That's all I'm saying. With a gag bar and everything? <laughs> Yeah, babe. Listening to your own voice. Calling, calling her, calling him babe and everything like that. It's, it's a relationship kind of talk, guys. But yeah, listening to your own voice is kind of awkward, not gonna lie. I, I, I actively don't really listen to my own videos. Voice can be bad enough for some people, but listening to your own sexual phone calls in silence with two detectives in the room as you realize you've just been caught red-handed has got to be worse than any damn bro you don't really see the the narrator even change his tone like that that much <laughs> so I, I feel bad for her kind of but the sentence there is However, it is what it is man However, with the language they've used so far, there's no evidence that the pair have actually engaged in any sexual acts. It's beyond embarrassing, guys. But that changes quickly as Jason begins to directly incriminate Charlene on the call. I just want you to look at me sometimes and be like, damn, my woman's fine. Fine is fine. You're probably remembering what they- try to remember remembering what they said in, in, in her head. That what happened during these phone calls, and she's like, "Oh gosh, that's good. That part's gonna be next." And you got a, a live ass fucking head game. Oh my god! <laughs> eh, it wasn't my best moments. I was just trying to get it done. Meh, meh. Are you in bed? Don't even get me thinking about that because it makes me so horny. Like just going back and thinking about yeah that. I guess you're horny. Oh yeah. You felt me, I was like soaking through my clothes. You get very horny very easy. I always want to have not sex. Good. Like, that's not even. Not good. I mean, it's not like I. Same, bro. <laughs> Looks like she's really into doing that, I guess. I just like look at someone, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so fucking horny. No, like, of course, like, I only get horny for you. You can't see how that sounds from like, my point of view. More, like a more recent thing than three years ago. No. The odd oh my God. audacity she has to say no after hearing that phone call is truly remarkable. But to her credit, she's not going down easily. The detectives try asking her if she thinks Jason would cover for her and she still doesn't break, sticking to her story that everything that happened happened outside of prison. Technically, this story could still be true with this phone call, but it definitely is odd for the couple to be recounting events from over three years ago in such detail especially when earlier she struggled to remember any details about their relationship three years yeah three years ago is kind of a long time guys you talk about how profound this was like this giving him this blowjob was but you like don't remember anything about anything about it it's like uh telling me something but you're having trouble coming up with that's that. He brings up a good point here, guys. Details, but you know what I mean. Like if it's that profound. I mean, I gave him a blowjob. How, how do you ex describe the blowjob? I mean, is that? Well, I'm not want to know like about the blowjob. I'm just yeah. so if this is a factual I... thing that happened three years ago, I feel like you would kind of remember some stuff about it. Like I yeah, feel like, I mean, like we sat in the car. We, you know. Like when I asked you who was there, him of course. Like when y'all met. Her. Yeah, I kind of remember things that happened three years ago in my relationship. Or whatever, and then when I asked like who else, you said it was like a bunch of friends. 
Yeah. But like you can remember one I kid's mean, I name after you think about it for 30 seconds. So yeah, I mean, that's I was... not making sense to me. You seem to have blanks in your memory when we get to certain details, but you remember being groped in the blowjob from three years ago. I find that hard to believe, okay? As I can remember stuff like that happening, guys. Like one of my one of my first times I had a relationship, I do remember some stuff like that, guys. This is your one chance to be honest with us. Yes. Once we get up and walk out and we're done, mm -hmm. we're done. Have y'all had any inappropriate contact, whether it's groping, blow jobs, vaginal, anal sex, anything, hand jobs? Yes, I am being vulgar to get a point across. Dang, bro. Straight up. Explain the dictionary of an axe here, guys. Yeah, no, it's not. None of that. Just as the detectives say, things really aren't adding up. Yet she's still sticking to her story, or at least she was, before a switch flipped and she said this. I mean, what is it? Uh, I might have given him a blowjob in the back part of the In the back part of the quad? Okay. How long ago was that? Uh, I don't know, months ago. The secret's out. Oh snap, bro. She straight up came clean right there, guys. And Charlene has confessed. But this matter is more complex than it may seem. In cases of officer-inmate relations, the main question that arises is the issue of consent. Given that Jason and Charlene knew each other prior to being in prison, it's not wrong to assume that consent went both ways in this interaction. However, in these cases, that's actually completely irrelevant. According to a 2005 report, federal law criminalizes all sexual relations and contact between prison staff and inmates, and that all sexual relations between staff and inmates are considered abuse. I think it's, you know, to protect, you know, in case, you know, it's not trying to, it's, it's, it's supposed to be like, uh, you know, jail, bro. It's not supposed to be a freaking love show where it... You know, even if relationships go on and stuff. If the act would have been considered consensual if it occurred outside of a prison. This is because of the huge amount of inmate abuse that was observed in prisons. In 1996, it was estimated that between 12 and 14 percent of all prison inmates had been sexually assaulted and the officers were rarely punished. So to prevent this, a zero tolerance policy was introduced to try and prevent abuse towards inmates. A policy, it seems, that Charlene completely ignored. I'm not gonna so, ask, but I feel like I know the answer. I'm losing my job. So that's that's not really up to me. Um, Internal Affairs is aware. Investigation is separate from ours because mm -hmm. there's it's, it's two totally different um, things. So yeah. What kind of charges? Like so, it's it's illegal to have sexual contact. Damn, bro. You didn't think of it in the spur of the moment, guys. With an inmate as an employee. So, um, I said the ball kind of be in their court, but I'll let you know as soon as I hear something. Um, I mean, can I go to jail? That's up to the DA's office. As it turns out, Charlene would lose her job, and the only time she'd ever be allowed back in jail would be for the 100 days that she'd be made to serve after being found guilty of sexual activity with a person in custody. Dang, bro. Crazy, yeah, anyone in their right mind would think it's okay to have sex, have a woman guard at a men's prison. Guys, I had a woman guard at a men's jail. I had a few. It's always wild to me that people like this who are part of the system know how it works. No, they are guilty yet. Still decide to testify without a lawyer. I know, right? I said that at the start. Baffling, no. Not only her lying about receiving phone calls from the inmate, but even talking to them in the first place. She's a privy. No, I know, right? She should know that stuff like that gets recorded. But yeah, guys, like, comment, subscribe, check out. Um, check out the... Uh, Original video description. I do all my reactions live on Twitch. So if you want to come through, say hi. You're more than welcome. And I'll see you guys next one, guys. Going to the 5K subscribers, guys. Later.